My name is uh, Christian Odinga, and uh, currently I'm undertaking my master's in uh, veterinary epidemiology and economics at the University of Nairobi. Uh, so today I'm here to present to you on some work that we did as part of my MSc, that is uh, to assess the importance of a uh, rabies vaccination campaign uh, at influencing community knowledge and prevention of this uh, disease. Uh, rabies is a disease that affects both animals and humans. It has a domestic cycle and also a wild cycle. Uh, in, the in the domestic cycle, the dog has been cited as the major source of infection in humans, but then uh, the wild cycle is equally important because uh, studies have shown that uh, the disease uh, has a, a potential of wiping out entire population, such as the African wild dog, with a detrimental effect to the ecosystem. And so currently, uh, 59,000 people die uh, for, of rabies uh, in the world every year. And this is because of uh, poor surveillance uh, and also limited resources allocated for the control and prevention of this disease. And uh, due to that, the World Health Organization uh, set a target to eliminate uh, human rabies uh, by the year 2030. And these have seen increased collaborations across health sectors and uh, the number of uh, rabies vaccination campaigns have also increased. Uh, in Kenya, it uh, accounts for about uh, 2000 deaths per year and uh, I can say we are not in a bad place because uh, under the stewardship of the zoonotic disease unit, we have a strategy to eliminate this disease uh, uh, as per the World Health Organization target. And uh, mass dog vaccination is the main uh, part of this uh, among other preventive uh, efforts. So uh, why Lykipia? Uh, in Lykipia, we have the Lykipia rabies vaccination campaign, uh, which was started in uh, 2015 by the gentleman on the right uh, of your slide. Uh, they've done this work, actually, they started it to increase uh, vaccination coverage in uh, pastoral and uh, smallholder settlements that uh, dominate that region. Uh, and also, they also have uh, limited access to veterinary services. Uh, there's a photo of their, their paper that they developed from their work. If you want to know more about what they've done, you can look into it. Uh, but then the map uh, just below uh, shows uh, the, the polygons represents the communities that have been visited uh, since this uh, vaccination campaign was started in 2015. And uh, I'd just like to point out that the northern part, uh, Ilmotio and uh, is predominantly made of uh, pastoral communities, while the southern parts uh, are made of uh, agro-pastoral settlements. So our objective for this uh, study was to evaluate the impact of this vaccination campaign towards uh, I mean, improving community knowledge and also prevention practices on rabies. So how did you go about it? Uh, we conducted a cross-sectional survey uh, for six months. We visited households in this, uh, in Lykipia region, uh, as shown on the map uh, below. Uh, those are the polygons represent the communities that have been visited by the vaccination campaign that we are assessing. And also on the light, right, there's a region where they have never visited. So we also conducted a survey in that uh, community. And uh, the right part of, my, part of my slide shows some of the questions that we are ask, asking them uh, uh, on a mobile-based uh, device provided by the Worldwide Veterinary Service and uh, deposited to a common database. The image is just me conducting one of the questionnaires to a respondent. Uh, we were interested in uh, three variables. Uh, that is the knowledge about the disease, the practices around it, and also the dog vaccination status. And uh, for this, we scored the rabies knowledge based on a number of questions as shown on the block on the right side, mainly, mainly transmission of the disease and the species affected. But we also teased out the practices of these communities around, around this disease based on the questions shown on the, on the lower part. That is the health seeking behavior for humans and also if they wash their wounds after dog bites. One of our key predictor variables, among others, was our vaccination years. That is the years that, the, that this uh, vaccination campaign covered in these communities that we visited. And we, we found that uh, uh, the, range of, uh, I mean, the range of years that uh, these communities have been visited by this vaccination campaign was uh, from zero to six years, with an average of uh, five years. Uh, the demographics of our participants was that 59% uh, of them were female, 26% uh, of them had no formal education, while 34% uh, had, studied, had studied from a secondary level and beyond. And their ages range from 13 years to 83 years with an average of uh, 35 years of age. <clears throat> what did you find? 
uh, we found that 60% uh, of our respondents uh, scored uh, or were considered to have inadequate knowledge about uh, this disease. And this was based on an aggregate score uh, on the questions like uh, how is uh, rabies transmitted, uh, uh, the typical signs, and also whether it's fatal or not. So 75% of our respondents will be able to identify that this disease is fatal. 69% uh, identified at least one typical sign in dogs. Uh, we are focusing on uh, nervous signs, uh, change of behavior, bites, hypersalivation. And 54% uh, of our respondents uh, stated that they knew this disease is transmitted via animal bites. Uh, on asking about uh, the species that can be affected, uh, the ones that knew that uh, this disease can affect both humans and uh, animals were 37%. Uh, 24% of uh, our respondents that had adequate knowledge about this disease could identify the dog as the main reservoir, and 2.3% could identify other mammals that can be infected by this disease. And so on further going deep into this analysis, we found that uh, the number of years uh, visited by this vaccination campaign was not significantly associated with uh, or did not influence uh, knowledge about rabies. But then education of the dog owners actually influenced uh, knowledge about rabies as shown on the, uh, on the plot there that shows that represents the odds, odds, odds ratios. Uh, the main source of information about rabies uh, as per our respondents, was uh, informal word of mouth, either hearing about rabies from their neighbors or friends or uh, uh, just uh, any person that they meet. Uh, while uh, vaccination effort, mainly the Lykipia rabies vaccination campaign, accounted for 5% uh, as the source of information. And it's also important to note that uh, about 17%, which is a good uh, number, did not know about rabies at all. Uh, on further looking into the sources of, of information, we found that uh, respondents who knew about this disease uh, through informal word of mouth uh, actually uh, scored, uh, was scored to have uh, inadequate knowledge about rabies. But then uh, uh, just to note, uh, sources such as school and books provided adequate knowledge about this disease based on our aggregate score. On looking at the dog vaccination status, which was the main aim of this uh, vaccination campaign, 63% of our respondents had their dogs vaccinated against uh, rabies. But then 87% uh, of the respondents that had their dogs vaccinated were, uh, were up to date with their vaccination. That is, uh, they, have, they had vaccinated their dogs uh, not more than one year before we conducted our study. And uh, again, uh, there was no uh, significant uh, association between uh, the number of years covered by the vaccination campaign and uh, the probability of the owners uh, to vaccinate their dogs, or the, there was no influence in the number of years to dog vaccination by the owners. But then uh, on the other hand, owner education and uh, knowledge about rabies actually influenced the vaccination status. Uh, when we looked at uh, some of the reasons, and this is just a uh, preliminary because uh, when we looked at some of the reasons that uh, uh, the, owner, the dog owners presented for not vaccinating their dogs. 14% uh, uh, of the respondents say that uh, they did not believe their dogs needed to be vaccinated. Uh, also, it's important to note that uh, a good percentage uh, say that they didn't know that their dogs should be vaccinated. And uh, another good percentage did not know where to get the vaccines for rabies for their dogs. Uh, looking at uh, health seeking behavior, 95% uh, of our respondents uh, say that they will visit the hospital after a dog bite. But then we all know that it's not enough to visit the hospital. There are other uh, practices that determine the outcome of a dog bite. So for example, we have practices such as uh, wound hygiene, uh, urgency of going to the hospital, and also knowing that you need to get uh, uh, vaccinated or post-exposure treatment. Uh, and 4% of our respondents that uh, say they will go to the hospital uh, stated that they will practice wound hygiene 5% showed urgency in going to the hospital by using terms such as going there immediately uh, before 24 hours elapses or the same, the same day. And 2% uh, of them knew exactly what they were going to get in the hospitals, that is anti-rabies vaccine. Uh, so what can we conclude so far from what we have? Uh, the number of vaccination years uh, uh, by this vaccination campaign is not as, was not a significant predictor of rabies knowledge and dog vaccination. But then education of the dog owners was, 
And uh, we can also say that uh, more efforts are needed to improve on uh, the human health seeking behavior uh, as a, a, a key practice in uh, preventing human rabies. So what are our recommendations? Uh, we recommend that uh, the Lakeipia rabies vaccination campaign should incorporate more education efforts uh, in, in tandem with the, their vaccination. And uh, they can do this by involving local elders during the planning process so that uh, people know, you know, conducting focus group discussions to educate the locals about the importance of vaccinating their dogs so that they don't just bring their dogs huh, to have them vaccinated for free while they don't know the importance of having their dogs vaccinated. And this uh, has been shown by a previous experience where we had uh, a canine distemper outbreak just after the 2017 vaccination, which led to uh, a detrimental effect. I mean, the communities were again, uh, doubting the relevance of vaccinating their dogs. The other recommendation is that uh, the vaccination campaign needs to train uh, local representatives so that they can act as a quick response team to constantly monitor the situation of uh, this disease and also other welfare uh, practices in the dogs and the humans. So what are the next steps? Uh, we plan to educate uh, uh, the communities uh, by conducting, uh, you know, educating local representatives, and also looking at uh, if looking at the the ethnic differences, so that we can determine if we need to carry out more education efforts in uh, other communities compared to others. And also, we plan to estimate the burden of uh, rabies by conducting uh, in intensive bite care management. And all these uh, steps will be working towards uh, improving the One Health uh, aspects of uh, this vaccination campaign. As uh, I can quote Henry Ford, if everyone else is moving to forward together, then success takes care of itself. Uh, finally, I'd like to acknowledge all the study participants, uh, Andrew Lesurmat, who was my field assistant and my university supervisors, and also all the other organizations that made this work possible in one way or the other. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Tari, for keeping it short and brief and to the point. There are several questions that are coming through, which you might need to look at uh, the chat and uh, discuss or respond to. But the interesting ones, which I think I'd like to throw out there, is a question by AU. I don't know whether that's African Union, but they call themselves AU. Is elimination of rabies achievable? I think something that we need to be thinking through. Uh, one from a good friend of mine says, dealing with stray dogs, do we need a dog protection policy? Well, and then maybe for Dr. Uh, Christian, did you use any, was there any use of local language? That's one. And then which other species, Dr. Gakuya of KWS is asking, which other species or animals were affected or did you look at? Maybe you can answer those two, then we can proceed to the next one. Uh, so first I'll ask, I'll answer the question. The first one was about, sorry. The first one was, uh, do you want to deal with is elimination of uh, rabies achievable? Uh, I can say elimination of human rabies is achievable. Okay. Then the second one is- And, and that is based on the, the current okay. trajectory. Okay. Yeah, but then also for, for the other cycles, it's also achievable. All right. If we can uh, do a good vaccination coverage. Okay. So it's about policy and implementing it because the strategy is in place. It's just ensuring the right actors are put in place and drives that process for us. Uh, yes. Okay. Then the, the last two, which are critical and important, is in your discussion, you, one of the things you said is use of local representatives. Yes. Somebody asked us whether the, the, the engagement was in local language or it was in English or the international, the other languages. And then Gakuya wants to know whether there were any other species of animals affected by the rabies other than dogs. Yes. So first of all, about uh, the language, we had a field assistant who is a local, and uh, he assisted in translating the questionnaires and also formulating the questionnaires. Right. We did it together. Okay. And then about uh, other species, I can say we have, uh, I mean, uh, what we've uh, seen from literature is that uh, rabies has uh, been incriminated in almost wiping out the entire African wild dog population mm -hmm. in certain settings. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ari. I think you can engage the rest on uh, the uh, chat box. 
I want to, and uh, my good friend Baraza will be picking up whether we need to have a dog protection policy or whether it's something that uh, we can look at at another level.